According to the Dalbar studies, the average investor consistently sees lower returns than the markets, or the general universe of stocks and bonds. While there are a number of reasons for this underperformance, one of the most significant factors cited is investor psychology. In other words, we are often our own greatest enemy when it comes to investments, buying when things are expensive and selling at the worst possible time. So what can we do to curb the shortcomings of our own mentality? We'll answer this question and more on today's Plain Bagel. The efficient market hypothesis is a theory that purports that stock's price reflects all available information of the company. In other words, since so many investors are trading different securities, we can assume that the prevailing market price reflects a stock's true value, meaning there's no opportunity to trade stocks above or below their actual worth. There are many studies that support one form of EMH or another, but there is a key assumption behind the theory that's often called into question. You see, EMH assumes that investors are, at an aggregate level, rational agents who carefully analyze their holdings and make decisions accordingly. This is something that not everyone believes. In fact, another branch of financial theory suggests the exact opposite. This field of study, known as behavioral finance, combines behavioral and cognitive psychology with economic theory, and it alleges that investors are often limited in their capacity to rationally manage their money. This means that we are oftentimes unable to optimize how our money is invested, which leads to a number of shortcomings. Aside from providing interesting insight into the markets, understanding basic behavioral finance can help us deal with our own irrationality. After all, by recognizing our own limitations, we can better avoid making common mistakes and perhaps even circumvent emotional influences that often dictate our decisions. So let's start by reviewing how behavioral finance frames the decision-making process. Whereas traditional finance purports that humans calculate probabilities of outcomes to maximize utility, behavioral finance suggests that we make decisions based on bounded rationality, whereby rather than fully optimizing our decision-making process, we instead focus on coming to sufficient or satisfactory conclusions. In other words, to make efficient use of our time, we often consider and process information until we get to what's required but not necessarily what's best. A great analogy is to think about the last time you went to a store and bought an item on sale. Before making the purchase, you probably could have checked to see if other stores had a better price for the same item, or you could have checked the rest of the store for a better deal. And hey, maybe you did. But more than likely, there's been a time when you accepted the sale as is. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means that our brains are great at efficiency. We can recognize patterns very easily and come to quick conclusions about certain problems. The issue, however, is that these mental shortcuts don't really work to our benefit in finance. Instead, they lead to inherent biases that influence our decision-making process, sometimes to a detrimental result. So let's get a better grasp on these biases we see in investing and how we can mitigate them. At a high level, these biases fall into two categories. The first of which are cognitive biases. Cognitive biases are errors in how we process or recall information that result in faulty reasoning or analysis. Think of when you've answered a math problem but came to the wrong solution. You don't have any attachment to your answer, but at some point you forgot a rule or a step that led you astray. Likewise, we see these errors when processing investment decisions, and they take one of two forms. Firstly, there's belief perseverance biases which, as the name suggests, are errors we employ as a way of supporting a conclusion we've already made. A popular one is confirmation bias, whereby a person subconsciously gives more weighting to evidence that supports their conclusion and less weighting to evidence against it. In investing, this may come in the form of using one research report to justify a stock purchase when there are 10 others with red flags about the company. The second type of cognitive biases are information processing biases, which impact how we digest information. A great example is mental accounting, whereby investors divide their wealth into different mental buckets based on their source or intended use, even though money is fungible or equal regardless of where it comes from. For example, in gambling, participants often separate their winnings from the money they came with and are often quick to spend their earnings, even though there's no real difference between the two sets of money. Cognitive errors are luckily easy to fix. They can be addressed pretty directly. And just being aware of the fact that you might be taking a mental shortcut can help reduce its influence over your monetary decisions. To better avoid making these errors, make sure to employ systematic processes when gathering and processing information about investments, and reason out your decisions before committing to them. Now, unfortunately, the second type of bias, known as emotional bias, is a bit harder to address. These biases originate from impulse and are related to how people feel rather than how people think. And as you're probably aware, emotions can be pretty debilitating to our rationality. 
A common emotional bias, which we've actually already discussed in a prior video, is loss aversion, whereby we feel stronger about losing money than we do about gaining similar amounts. Another one most of us are all too familiar with is the self-control bias. It's the classic spending problem faced by large chunks of the population. We often have difficulty trading off short-term gratification for long-term gain. Most people know they need to save more for retirement, and yet they can't help themselves when it comes to buying arguably unnecessary things. But possibly the most important bias to understand for investors is the regret aversion bias. Simply put, people never want to regret a decision they've made, and as such they tend to conform with what others do. This has been theorized to lead to what's known in finance as herding, where people buy into industries that others are buying and sell industries where others are selling, regardless of whether it is a good time to do so or not. This leads to something called market momentum. For example, as markets go down, investors worried about losing more money sell their holdings, which leads to the markets falling even further, causing a vicious cycle. So because investors tend to follow the herd, bad situations often become much worse. While being aware of these biases helps, the primary issue is that they are difficult to change because they're driven by raw emotion. Instead, the best way to mitigate emotional biases is to adapt our decision-making approach so that we can avoid the influence our emotions have. For spending problems, try leaving the card at home or using physical cash to reduce the convenience of spending. To help with saving, set up automatic deposits to an investment account that takes money from your paycheck before you have the opportunity to spend it. When it comes to investments, probably the best thing you can do is reduce how often you watch your performance. Limit how frequently you check on the markets, and if you think you'll need help, hire an advisor you can call when you're feeling an urge to transact. After all, investment decisions should always be made from a rational standpoint. If you're on the verge of tears watching your stock performance, you're probably not in the best headspace to manage financial affairs. Biases have a far-reaching influence over the investment industry. Aside from affecting us on a personal level, they impact virtually every component of the financial markets. Company management may be blind to prevalent issues in their firm, investment analysts can easily be influenced in how they cover a company, and even other market participants who, at the aggregate, influence market performance itself may fall victim to the whims of the human brain. We can't control the biases of others, but we can identify when they are present and adjust our own approach to ensure we don't succumb to the same influences. And by keeping our cool and employing disciplined tactics, we can find ourselves facing investment opportunities when the rest of the market is losing their heads. And with that said, we're out of time. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe. If you have any feedback or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. For The Plain Bagel, my name is Richard Coffin. Thanks for joining me today.